Good afternoon. I'm very glad to meet you right here. And I'm Joe. I'm from Taipei Municipal Zhongzhen Senior High School. I, I have been in here and I see some great friends right here. Very glad to meet you right here. And then today I'm going to talk about sentence pattern and also grammar. However, you have better think about this. When it comes to grammar and sentence patterns, actually they are very boring, okay? So especially for low achievers or intermediate achievers. So what are we supposed to do to enhance their involvement in this kind of lesson modules? So today you have better think about this. And also, according to what Brian mentioned uh, earlier in our meeting, I also added new parts concerning their pretest. So what you see in this booklet is a little bit different from the PowerPoint, okay? So I want you to think about this because I added that part today. Thank you. And then, of course, uh, you can see some of the keywords. I don't have to explain anything. For this lesson module, actually, the key point is whether we can use the games or some tasks for their learning and also some meaningful context. So I don't want to talk a lot. Later on, if you check the module, you will see I don't start with my lectures. Instead, I let them make some inferences about uh, from certain activities or some games and so on and so forth to help them try to generalize the rules. Okay. And, and what matters is, can we also do that for low achievers? whose English score is roughly like, you know, B plus, B, C. And today, my student's proficiency will be B plus and B. I will talk about that, okay? And then, of course, we want them to have the generalization about the language rules. And also, what matters is their junior high school grammar, because you may think, oh, Joe, so uh, they don't have to learn a lot about something like subjunctive mood or something like, okay, inversion, so on and so forth. And I think not yet. Even though they know that, they still don't know how to communicate and or even write. And today, I want you to double check my focus may be different from what junior high school teachers or high school teachers expect. Okay, first of all, this is my design principle. Number one, we try to avoid you know, some, some weird or difficult or abstract grammar rules. I, I, I don't do that in my lesson module. Instead, I want them to have some kind of inferences, okay, and I pay attention to the pragmatics. That means the use of the language. And then I also have two parts. You may say, Joe, you got two parts. This is what we see from the ga, but that is the sentence patterns for production and sentence pattern for recognition. However, in my lesson module, even though Xi Yong Ju is supposed to be structure for production or application, however, however, in my lesson modules, relative clauses are so difficult. So, so difficult, especially for P talented students. So that's why, or even for my low achievers, they are still struggling with this kind of grammar. So I put that in this section, like only for recognition, not for production or application. However, remember, this is only a module. You have to make adaptations. Don't copy and paste. Don't be a copycat, okay? Okay, try to make some changes, okay? Thank you. Okay, because I'm not a virtuoso, I'm not a master, okay? You have to make some changes. You are the master of the classroom. Okay, and number two, what Brian mentioned earlier, Professor Yen mentioned earlier, little by little, not a lot, not a lot. You may say, they need a lot of grammar. No, they don't need a lot because they hate grammar. <laughs> However, we need to let them use the grammar at least in their daily life or in their communication. And also, Little by little, and then gradually, okay, gradually, not a lot. So for different, we got six lessons right here in this module, and then for this module, I don't talk about a difficult grammar, instead I talk about important grammar. So I talk about marked, the marked sentence patterns or grammar. Okay, so I want you to double check this, okay? Little by little, okay? Okay, and then this one is, Practice in different contexts. That means, remember, English teaching provides three P's. Presentation, practice, production. We got the three P's. And presentation has a lot to do with your teaching. However, I want you to pay attention. Perhaps for this lesson, the presentation is very short and very 
spot on. That means cut to the point. Instead of wasting so much time asking them to copy down the rules. Okay? So far, it's okay. Even though you talk a lot about grammar rules in Chinese, they still don't get it. You have to help them. You have to help them to try to have the generalization. So they need to have some practice and production. Practice is a little bit mechanical. However, you can also add some fun. We learn similar grammar rules all the time, or sentence patterns all the time in this class. However, we use different tasks. We use different tasks. We use different kinds of context. We recycle them again and again and again in an interesting way instead of boring, instead of boring them. Okay? So we don't want them to feel bored. So not that mechanical. Okay, and then this one, don't forget, you may say, Joe, but well, what about, you know, you start to pay attention. We still need to differentiate the teaching. Because in this kind of lesson module, some of those low achievers, okay, their English competence, comparatively speaking, is higher than those students whose English is not that good. They are still struggling. So you see, sometimes we still have to reduce Sometimes we have to make it a little bit difficult, a little bit difficult, okay? So you have to double check. How do you reduce the vocabulary? And also, don't forget to give them scaffolding. Scaffolding. Word back. Lots of teachers always say, oh, they don't, they don't have a lot of vocabulary. So give them the word back. Okay? Don't complain. Say, oh, they don't know how to do it. Give them the word back. They can refer to that every day. Even in my regular classroom. I, they still have 1,200 word list in my freshman English classroom. You may say, Joe, but they are not low achievers, but they can keep using some of the words they learned before. Remember, instead of the vocabulary textbook, some of the low achievers, they can re use them. Understand? They can use them in their daily life, okay? Or they can use them in their classroom. Otherwise, they will keep asking you, Joe, how do you say blah, blah, blah in English all the time? All the time, okay? And also, don't forget, your scaffolding also includes number one, sen number two, sentence friend. Lots of people will say, oh, they don't know how to talk. Teach them how to talk. For example, in a conversation practice by using uh, action verbs like do, does, did, if they don't know how to show their opinions, teach them how to show opinions by saying, yes, I think, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't think, blah, blah, blah. Give them the structure, okay? Don't just say, oh, they don't know how to talk about that. You, that means you haven't ta taught them. So I want you to pay attention to this, okay? And don't forget, ask them to collaborate or ask them to work together as a team, okay? Because they, they love it. Oh, by the way, in my, in my classroom, I don't do competitive games. Because in my, this is my philosophy. You can, of course, you can play games, but that doesn't mean you need to, oh, if you get it, you get one point. You get it, you get two points. It's still okay. But in my classroom, I want them to learn how to co collaborate. Okay? To, you know, work together. Okay? Instead of fighting for points. Okay? So I want you to, you know, uh, think about this. And the last one is from comprehension to production from comprehension to production. But I want to keep this right here because later, after, because later I will an analyze a little bit. Uh, I will analyze my pretest a little bit and you will see, according to this, I think my focus will be more on this later on, later on. You, you will see why. Because I think, originally I thought my students would be right here. However, I think they are not that bad so they can be more toward production part, more production, okay? So for your reference, okay. So this is my, uh, this is originally my lesson plan. And then folks, don't forget what Brian already mentioned earlier. I start with my students' needs and also their uh, uh, teaching objective or learning objective. This is what they, I want them to do. Okay? A little bit like backward design. Backward design. Do you remember backward design? I want them to use this, okay? From lesson one to lesson five. Everyone? But if you think, Joe, but my students' English ability is not that good. So 10 lessons. 
don't just stick to the rules, okay? Everyone, here, this is only for my student. Maybe, trust me, after this, I, I, I believe I will make the, I will change the time. Maybe just four lessons will be good enough for me, for me, because I already did the pretest, so I know I will change the lesson module a little bit, okay? And for the, the last one, I still want them to recognize that part, okay? And this one, uh, everyone, you already uh, have this, right? So everyone, can I uh, ask you to go over the uh, PowerPoint? Do you all have this? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Can you help me go over this very quickly? Uh, I, I gave you only three lessons for your reference. And you can see, obviously, I don't start with, okay, let's talk about grammar. How do I usually start? Can you tell me how do I usually start? Yeah, very good, thank you. I start with their learning experiences. I want them to use the sentence patterns first without telling them I'm going to use sentence patterns. And you may say, Joe, why do you have to do that? Because instead of saying, oh, I want, instead of saying, oh, today we're gonna learn about action verbs. Today we're gonna learn about, you know, you know some indirect speech, which may not only bore them, and they don't know why they have to go, gonna use this sentence patterns. I want them to understand why they want to use the sentence pattern. Not only that, let them experience the sentence patterns, the context of sentence patterns first. So I give them some contextualization. So we can see right here, I got lead in, and for the lead in, I usually have a, a mini task, a mini task. Everyone, you can also use it for your regular classroom. You can make it difficult, okay? So you can see right here, and then, don't forget, this is a little bit like you need to introduce yourself and then like this and then you, you need to introduce yourself and then later on introduce yourself to other people and then later on other people need to introduce you and also one of the partners. Because this is for uh, remedial instruction, so not so many students in the classroom. So this one will work. In a regular classroom, you're going to do it in another way, okay? So we start with this, and then we start with this, and then we start to, oh, after this activity, we begin to think about what, what B verbs we, use, we just used. I want them to generalize this part, remember? Okay, we want to generalize this part, okay? Like this, and then I want them to notice what did they talk about. Okay, understand? Okay, thank you. Okay, and then we, we, we start some practices, including Sentence relay. One, two, three, four, five. He is. He is a. He is a good. He is a good. And then he's a good man. Something like that. Okay. And then I want them to do something like this. Okay. And then right after this, right after this, if uh, uh, Brian also gave me a suggestion, they can also start with a chunk, like he is a good man, a good man, or a good teacher. Just a chunk instead of doing this. So this is also for high, this one is for low achievers, so you can make some changes. Okay? And then for the last part, did you see? Presentation and practice, and then they can have their own, another kind of difficult practice. This is not like production, but they can also do some practices from uh, Learn English Kids from British Council. You may say, Joe, they are high school students, Learn English Kids. Yeah, pretty difficult, okay, understand? Not that easy, okay? You may say, why, why not learn English teens? It's okay, but pretty difficult, this one. <laughs> okay, so they can practice this. Another kind of context, I want to see whether this kind of idea is transferable. Okay, transferable is the key word. You see another kind of lesson plan, it's also the same thing. We start with information gap, and then practice. I start with what they, what they can you know, use first, and then they start to generalize the rules, and then more practices, even production, like mock writing. You may say, mock writing, is that difficult? No, it's not difficult. They are all junior high school English. If you double check, I never use high school English right here. They're all junior high school English, and they all have what? The word bank. Remember? Okay, please pay attention. Okay, and then later on, they need to create this and then create and then uh, and draw a picture to introduce their family or something. And then they need to have a gallery wall. And the last part, it's like reflection and production. This is like reflection, like 
exit ticket. I want to examine how much they learned. So like three things I learned today, two questions I still have, one sentence I can make. One sentence I can make, they need to make a sentence about or based on the sentence pattern they learned from that lesson, okay? So you see, it's still very simple. But don't forget, I want to diagnose their learning, so it's okay to use Chinese or English. So the other one is still the same, because this one is about conjunctions, okay, subordinate conjunctions, like this. Okay, I, I want you to go over this like this. Okay, now let's go to this one, because I, I, I promise I don't want to spend so much time on this. So my lesson plans, I only let you know the structure about how I plan my lessons. So you see I got the pre-test and post-test and also formative assessment. And then my pre-test is very simple. We start with the multiple choices. They are very simple, based on the uh, five sentence patterns. And also com uh, combination and also translation. So you see, remember the translation. Remember the translation. The translation is like this. And the last one is identify and write down the main message. Okay, the major message, okay? So like this, they are all relative, they are all sentences embedded with relative clauses, and then they need to identify the major part, like the beautiful house is mine. I think this is difficult, but, but I don't know why. Actually, there aren't a lot of mistakes. Just a few students make mistakes. The key mistake is here, translation. The key part is here, okay? I think they have a lot of problems right here, production. So you see, this is my first part. Did you see? Uh, right here, 在选择题, some students still cannot recognize relative clauses. This is very simple. This is the house I want to buy. Sorry, can I turn off the lights here? People are fighting to them. This is the house I want to buy. This is the house I want to buy. One student chose who, and one student chose where. I, I, I can't understand why this person chose where, okay? Because we learned relative adverb, right? But this student, I want to say hello, okay? But that's okay, trust, don't worry. I, we still need to learn, okay? And this one is combination. One of my students, don't worry, but he didn't know how to do this. What is wrong? I don't know, I don't understand. I don't understand. And that one, what, what is wrong? I don't understand. What, and that person wrote, what is wrong because I don't understand. Okay, because in, in junior high school, when they use this, they will start with, I don't know what is wrong, okay? They always understand. But this one, maybe they don't know the rules. I, I will still ask them for further information. This is what I observed so far. And this is translation. You can see first. Joe is my friend. He walk to school every day. He like basketball. And me too. When I see him, I always feel happy. And this one. He is, he like uh, basketball. I am also like basketball. I'm also like basketball. Okay, thank you. Okay? When I see him, I, also, I always feel happy. Okay, that's good. But this one, he's my friend. He go to school on foot. He love basketball. I like to. Pay attention, I like to. When I see him, I am all away. Away, feel happy. I am away, not always, away, go away, okay, feel happy, okay, something like that. I am always happy when I see him, and also this one, when I watch him, not when I see him, when I watch him, okay. Pay attention, this is not about vocabulary teaching, it's about sentence pattern. So for this part, I don't really focus on that, but I want you to see this. You see, let me generalize their mistakes, their translation. Two to three students will combine be verbs and action verbs together. He is like, he is loves basketball. Okay? And they all, they all have problem with subject verb agreement. Because in my lesson modules, I don't want to focus on this one. But they always make mistakes in this part. So maybe I need to change my module a little bit and focus on this. Because all of them make, make, make this mistake. Okay? But we can think about that later. And the last one. They don't know do the did. They always say, I like to. <laughs> Two of my students did that, okay? Uh, we can think about this because they are my students, okay? And the other one is identifying. 
identify. Sorry, this is not a common phrase. Sorry, this is identify major issues. Okay, this place, this mistake. Sorry, this I just made. You see, this one, 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 this Because he was brainwashed. Because 上面的练习很多 because, okay. So he was brainwashed. Okay, understand? But I can forgive him. Okay, so you can see. Uh, maybe, maybe I will have some revision. Maybe I will have some revision. Maybe I don't have to spend. Maybe I don't have to spend so much time on from module one to module four. Okay, because they are very simple. Like when if they don't make a lot of mistakes. But but when it comes to production, they have a lot of mistakes. Like when if they. Multiple choices, no problem. Combination, no problem. But their production, they got problems. And communication. So maybe I can focus more on this two. Maybe for this one, I only have to focus on the last part. Uh, unit six, relative causes. Okay. And this is also the formative assessment. Don't forget, this is like assessment for teaching as well, and also assessment as uh, assessment for learning, and also assessment. As learning, 形成性评量 to help help them find out how much they have achieved, and then I can also identify whether they learn something. Hopefully, hopefully they are familiar with the rules. But my focus may not just be comprehension. This part, production, I really want them to use it for speaking and writing. Okay, because all all of them think English is very difficult, and then. I will start from the、uh, mid May. I will start from mid May, okay? And then for the future, perhaps for some some schools, if they're interested, or some vocational high schools, you can also use it for remedial instructions for the, this kind of elective elective course, okay? And thank you so much. Thank you.